You know, the moment the war started, I had the strongest emotional shock. I wanted to run with all the banners that existed to the center of Moscow and shout about it as loud as I could. On the first day of the war, I decided that I would leave the newsroom, just go into nowhere. All the opposition information channels had already been destroyed at the point. There was a gigantic propaganda bubble. I lived in Chechnya for a while when I was a child. My house was destroyed during the first Chechen war. I was also a refugee for many years. We had no house, no possession, nothing. We fled during the first Chechen war. And so, in that moment, I imagined how Ukrainian women and children would feel, what fate awaited them that they would be repeating my fate. I understood the horror that was happening. My emotions were so strong also because I had understood for a long time that I needed to break this information blockage somehow, but I lacked the courage to do so. And in that moment, I had the courage to do it. We were well aware that no one would rush to look for us over the weekend. We had two days to leave the Russian territory, and thank God it worked out. I can't tell you which direction we were going. The only thing I can say is that we changed seven cars, and just before the border, something, of course, went wrong, as our car got stuck in the mud. We got out in a bare field and there was total darkness all around. We ran across the ploughed field, not seeing anything in front of us and not knowing where we were going. Our chaperone was with us. And since the cellular network was not working at the time due to how remote our location was, he even had to navigate the way by the stars. So it was a real test of strength. You know, I think Putin is losing power. In the current situation, he is alone. He is isolated. So I think this regime does not have long to live. Its days are numbered. Don't ask me when and how the war will end. The only thing I can say is that the war must end in an absolute victory for Ukraine or else we, Russia, have no future. I just recently read that this process of creating an international tribunal in the Hog has finally started. It's being planned under the auspices of the United Nations. And I hope the world community will succeed with it. Because I'm very much looking forward to seeing these criminals sitting in the dock at an international tribunal. I am of course very fearful for my life. As friends who call me keep making jokes. What do you prefer? Novichok, Polonium, or a car crash. I, of course, joke back. But I try to take some safety precautions. To escape, we chose Friday night, when most of the law enforcement officers are off duty. They go to their country houses with their vodka and barbecues. We knew very well that no one would come looking for us on a weekend. We had two days to leave the Russian territory. We used seven cars one after the other and before the border we got bogged in a field. We jumped out of the car into the open field on a dark night. We ran blind across the ploughed field. We didn't know where to go. A man was with us and we didn't have a mobile phone network during that period. So he found his way by the stars. It was a real ordeal. We spent hours crossing the ploughed field, constantly hiding from border patrol cars, tractor headlights, which we passed at one point. It was really very dangerous. They are fighting for the future of the civilized world. At this point, I hope these heroic people win and recover all their territory. Only then 
will we be able to talk about the collapse of Putin's criminal regime? Only then will Russia be able to get rid of Putinism. And only then we will be able to return to a civilized society. I thought I was going to spend a few years in prison after I protested news of state control channel one. Before I did it, I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to go live, that I would be arrested as soon as I entered the studio and that no one would ever know what I was going to do, that I would just end up in a basement of Lubyanka.